All right. What's going on, everyone? It's me, Aaron Collins, and this is another edition of me addressing worldly issues in a godly way. I trust and hope that everyone is doing well, everyone's in their right mind, and everyone is safe. So without further ado, let's get on with the commentary. As you can see um, from the title of this particular video, certain things have recently happened at the border between Texas and Mexico. We had a little, little bit over 10,000 Haitian immigrants that were taking up residence there, escaping the atrocities and the chaos and confusion of their nation, of Haiti. Haiti's going through a lot of turmoil right now with the recent assassination of their president and the, like I said, the utter destruction and widespread panic going there. Many of the, Asian, the Haitians escaped and were taking up refu uh, yeah, refuge, residence in Mexico, just trying to get away from, like I said, the aforementioned chaos and confusion. The issue comes that while they're here, while they're at the border, many of them stranded, the people who are supposed to help them, many of them Border Patrol agents, and I'm not saying anything against the Border Patrol. Some of them actually did have, have um, good intentions. But many of these eight, the Haitians were mistreated. They were taken back and deported back to the country, back to um, a situation that they were trying to escape from. There's even controversial images and pictures of Border Patrol agents on horseback rounding up Haitians with what appears to be whips. Come to find out later on, those were said to be the, the reins of the saddle that they were, of the horse they were riding on. Either way, the situation doesn't look right because it goes back to a time of antebellum slavery where slave, where white slave owners ran down slaves on horseback. It takes back, it brings back those images and the horrors and atrocities of that that black Americans went through. Now, what the title of this video meaning is that I was comparing that to what happened with the Afghan immigrants. A lot of, know, a lot of people know what went, recently went down in Afghanistan with the situation going on there, the rioting, the Taliban and other terrorist organizations have waged war on the people, many of them Americans that were stationed over there. However, you got state and they got nations such as the United States giving asylum to them. From what I understand, this is what I've heard, and it's only what I've heard. Allegedly, it's nothing proven, but allegedly 90,000 Afghan immigrants have been given asylum and have been given refuge here in the States. Many of them going to places like Texas and a lot of the southern areas. Well, meanwhile, the southern border is being patrolled and the immigrants of Haitian descent there are being taken up and treated as if they're invaders. So what I'm getting at here is that this is a different comparison. It's a vast comparison of how people of African descent are treated. Yeah, we know Haiti is a nation in the Caribbean, but still, these are melanated people of African descent. And they're given the treatment that dark, that black people are being treated with, which is discriminatory treatment. They're being treated as invaders, as enemies, as enemy agents. There is something to be disposed of. 
they're getting the same treatment that we over here as FBA or ADOS blacks are being treated with here. Yeah, I get it that we should worry about what's going on in the United States. But I'm going to go as far as to say I believe that us as black Americans, we should take a little bit more of a sympathetic and compassionate cause toward the Haitians because at the end of the day, they're black people just like us. They're still people of African descent, much as we are. The cultures are different, sure, but we are still melanated people. One thing we can learn from the Haitians is for revolutionary practices of, of, of self-defense. Haiti has been Haiti's been pretty much slept on for a long time. We gotta remember, we gotta take into consideration that the Haitians fought off the French colonizers. They fought off the French, the Spanish, and all the other European oppressors. And as I guess so to say, as a form of revenge, America has waged war. Haiti has been destabilizing, been destabilized since the days when, in the 80s, when puppet leaders such as Papa Doc and eventually his son, Baby Doc, ruled the nation. They lived in other, they lived in rich, in richness and wealth while the people of the nation lived in utter poverty, barely able to feed themselves. Fast forward years later, you had people like Everstead. Of course, America helped kick him out of the country, but it's still. And I'm not saying that the recent president, Moise, was any better, but he was assassinated. And, you know, the country... Haiti's been dealing with a lot of issues since its inception. A lot of people say because of witchcraft and voodoo practices, whatever. I mean, who's to say? But um, when you compare the, the Haitian immigrants to the Afghans, it only comes to one thing. Afghans... Well, they're as close and phenotypically to resemblance as Europeans. And anything that is a European look, anything that looks white is accepted. But anything that's melanated, anything that's black, anything that's of African descent is to be rejected. You see, this is what's going on right now. That's why you have this outright discrimination. And really what's happening is, is, is the nation is, the United States is exposing itself once again, showing its hand, showing its true colors. But the very fabric of this nation was based on racism, was built on discrimination, the backs of oppression. I mean, I'm not saying anything that no one doesn't already know. But as black Americans, as ADOs or foundational black Americans, whatever they call us, I think we should take up a more sympathetic stance toward the Haitians. Yeah, I do believe that we should deal with our issues here first. I get that. We should. But let's look at what's happening we should understand what it's like to be discriminated against because of the color of our skin, because it's still happening to us right now, to this very day. Let's break down Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a country that has been around since, I don't know, BC. Let's see, with the Afghans, how America's stake in Afghanistan began in the early 90s, late 80s, the United States went over there, helped Afghanistan when they were being occupied by the Soviets. American forces bailed them out, 
gave them weapons, taught them how to fight. And ironically, those became the seeds that planted what became known as the organization Al-Qaeda. However, Al-Qaeda became the Frankenstein monster that America created and it turned against them. You had leaders like Osama bin Laden who became America's, the FBI's top wanted and his second in command, Zawawi. These became the two most dangerous men on the planet. And the aforementioned offshoots of Al-Qaeda that happened afterwards. You have the Taliban, which waged war on the people. You have these same practices, the same people who bombed the World Trade Center and were responsible for the infamous 9-11 attacks are now being given asylum, being invited into the country with open arms, while the Haitians, who are literally out actually already in Mexico seeking asylum and seeking residence, are being shown the back being shown the front door, being put back in a position in a situation that they're trying to get away from. So that's just my whole analysis and breakdown of what's going on with that situation there. Last time I checked, some Haitian immigrants are being given residence in Houston. Supposedly, they're, <clears throat> I guess there's no more encampments in Del Rio, which is a border town in Texas, right by the Mexican border. We shall see. But this is something that um, needs to be thought of, that needs to be taken in consideration, that it's 2021. We're living still in a global pandemic, and yet we still got discriminatory racist practices. White supremacy is still alive and well. Don't get it twisted. And it shows us its hand every day. Anyway, y'all, um, let me know what you think. Get in this comments. Tell me how you feel about this whole situation. The Haitian immigrants, the Afghan immigrants, and everything that's been tra that's transpired because of all of it. Let me know what you think. Get in the comments. Am I saying something that's believable, or do you think I'm talking out the side of my neck? Let me know. Anyway, y'all know what to do. Hit the bell icon when I drop more content. Support the channel at paypal.me forward slash real Aaron Collins, as well as patreon.com forward slash real Aaron Collins. Oh, yeah, and I also want to give honorable mention. I said I was going to do this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this, give this some light. A lot of you know that... Um, the whole issue with Gabby Petito and Brian Landry has been taking up the news, taking up the airwaves, not just nationwide, but globally. This young lady was found allegedly dead. Her boyfriend or fiance, Brian Landry, is a number one suspect. And that's been on people's TVs every day. But we have black women who have been murdered, been missing, been having the same things happen to them, but no one says anything about it. Black women are murdered by their partners, killed, but they're not given the same type of energy or same kind of airtime as when it happens to a white woman. Black women are pretty much ignored in the, in the headlines and in things that are happening right now. Recently in Atlanta, there was a, a protest, uh, a demonstration of black women coming together to remember those women that were slain. Well, I just wanted to let you know that I stand in solidarity with them because without black women, we wouldn't have the birth of black men 
course, without black men to get with the black women, we wouldn't have a black family. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there, giving an honorable mention, because it's happening. Malcolm X said a long time ago that the black woman is the most, is the least unprotected, most unprotected woman on the planet. I might add also the most disrespected woman on the planet. So there, that's my two cents on that. Well, many of you know I've been feeling this way, been standing and taking up the cause and holding the line for black women for a long time now. Ever since I've been on this, I've been not feeling this way. And I still feel this way about black women. On and offline, I feel this way about black women. I don't feel this way anytime when I get on here and make a video, when you see me on any of these social media platforms, I'm like this all the time. I'm compassionate and sympathetic to black women because black women to me are the mothers of civilization and they deserve respect. Black women have, have fed and, and taken care of civilization all the way back to slavery. It was black women's breasts who fed unwanted white children when their own mothers couldn't feed them or they were, something was wrong with them or they couldn't take care of them. It was black women who nursed entire villages and nations back to health. But that's a whole nother story altogether. That's a whole nother video probably in itself. But I just want to put that out there. And let it be known that I stand in solidarity with you black queens. I love you all. And thank you. Anyway, y'all. You know what it is. God loves you. I love you. Let's do life. See you in the next video. And everyone just stay safe. And think about what I'm saying.